In this video, I'm going to show you how to create custom keyboard shortcuts in Adobe Premiere to make your editing much more efficient. Hi and welcome or welcome back to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. All right, if you're not already using keyboard shortcuts, it is time to start. Here are three reasons why. Efficiency. It will make your editing more efficient, less navigating menus or hunting for tools. Focus. It will improve your focus. The less time you spend hunting for tools and menu items, the more focused you can stay on the actual work. Ergonomics. Less physical strain while editing. Anyone who edits for long periods of time who's had carpal tunnel syndrome from clicking that mouse too much will tell you that this is no joke. So today's the day to level up by embracing keyboard shortcuts. Let's do it. Panel Overview I'm working in Premiere version 25.1.0, so if yours is older or newer, it might look slightly different. So to access the Shortcuts panel, go to the Premiere menu and scroll down to Keyboard Shortcuts. The first thing you'll see in the panel is the drop-down menu in the upper left, where you'll find a variety of pre-packaged presets. These are a collection of shortcuts that are often taken from other editing systems. So if you're used to editing on another system, you'll be able to use the very same shortcuts in Premiere. We have the Premiere default preset, under that is an older version of Premiere, here's an old Media Composer, and here's Final Cut Pro 7. Seriously though, Final Cut Pro 7? That was like 2009. Comment below if you still have a working version of Final Cut Pro 7 on your computer. I'd be curious to know if any still exist. All right, let's select the Premiere default preset. That's the preset that Adobe suggests you use with Premiere, and it's a great place to start. On the keyboard layout here, you can see what each key is mapped to. And if you click on each key at the bottom, you can see a little more info about that specific shortcut. And lastly, at the bottom left, you can do a search here for your favorite action to see what's currently mapped to it. So for example, if you wanna see what the key is for clear in and out, which is clear in point and out point, you can search it like so and you'll see that Option plus X will clear your in and out. Modifiers. Let's talk modifiers. So each of these keys will do the thing that you see written on it, but you can also press that key as well as another one to make it do something else. These additional keys are called modifiers. So for example, if you click on one of my favorites, V, which brings up the selection tool, you can see in the lower right that V by itself is a selection tool, but if you hit Command plus V, V becomes Paste, as in copy and paste your clip. And if you hold down Option Command V here, it will paste attributes, which is applying effects, settings, or adjustments from one clip to another. So in summary, each key has something that's mapped to it, and some have modifiers, which enable it to do an additional thing. The Commands menu. Under the Presets menu, you'll see a drop-down menu for commands. Commands are things that are activated when specific panels are open. The first one is for the application itself, but under that are the commands that you will see for the individual panels. So for example, Audio Clip Mixer has nothing mapped to it. All the keys are gray. Effects panel, on the other hand, has one thing mapped to it, delete. Hitting delete will delete your custom effect, if you have the effects panel open. One thing to note is that panel shortcuts will override application shortcuts when you're using that panel. Also, you can tell which keys have a panel shortcut assigned to it because it'll have a green triangle on the key. Application shortcuts are purple, panel shortcuts are green, keys that do both have both. Okay, let's move on. Examples of keyboard shortcuts in action. Let's see some keyboard shortcuts in action. Click back on the Adobe Premiere Pro default preset at the top and take a look at your keyboard map here. Let's take L for example. Here you can see that L will shuttle right. 
Shuttle right just means that it'll play your clip in the timeline forwards. K will shuttle stop or pause your clip, and J will shuttle left or play your clip backwards. L to play, K to pause, J to rewind. By the way, you should be using the JKL keyboard shortcuts every single time you edit. Literally, if there's one thing that you remember from this video, let it be that. It's the single most useful set of keyboard shortcuts in Premiere. And this JKL assignment exists on pretty much every editing platform. So back to L. If you click on L and look in the lower right, you'll see everything that it does. I can see that if I hit L and hit shift, it will shuttle slow or play in slow motion. Now that I said that, I'm gonna be honest with you and tell you that this totally does not work. I think it's a bug in Premiere. But as long as we're here, I'm gonna show you a better way to do this, to play in slow motion. Just use a combination of the pause button or K and the L to move it in slow motion. So K and J to slow motion rewind and K and L to slow motion fast forward. All right, let's move on. Keyboard shortcuts that I use all the time. These are the keyboard shortcuts that I find to be most useful. And I suggest that you take note and start using them as well, right off the bat. As mentioned, JKL to play and rewind and pause, Command C to copy, Command V to paste, V for selection tool, P for the pen tool, comma for insert edit, period for override edit, and option plus X to clear in and out points. That's just to get you started. You can add more as you go, of course. Speaking of, let's show you how to do that. How to make your own keyboard shortcuts. So when making your own keyboard shortcuts, you should always start with the Premiere default shortcuts and add your new ones to the default ones. That way, if you hop on a new system and you have to put in your shortcuts, you'll already have most of them in place. And all you have to do is add a few to get up and running. So first make sure you have the Adobe Premiere Pro default selected and hit save as to the right of it. Name it your first name and hit save. Now the first ones I usually add are the following, lock all video tracks and lock all audio tracks. Because sometimes I'm working with just audio and I don't wanna accidentally move or delete video and vice versa. And I always assign these two to Q and W because those are the keys right near my ring finger and they're easy to hit. So if you wanna follow along and add them as well, you'll have them too. So first let's add the shortcut for lock all audio tracks. First search lock all here to bring up the lock all audio command and you'll see that nothing is currently mapped to it. So we're gonna add something. I'm going to click to the right of it and type the letter W by lock all audio to assign it to W. When I do this, I get a warning that W is currently being used by another task. The task is ripple trim next edit to playhead, which I never use. And honestly, I bet a good amount of money that you don't either. In fact, I had to look it up to see exactly what that does. The title is so convoluted. So let's override this. Hit OK, and Premiere saves the shortcut and closes the panel. And now when you hit W on your keyboard, all the audio tracks are locked. To unlock them, you hit W again. Just a side note, I could choose some of the gray keys up here that don't have anything currently mapped to them, but I want that Q and W right by my ring finger. I don't wanna have to move my hand up to the F1 through F12 row every time I wanna activate it. It's up to you to figure out a place that's easily accessible and easy to remember for your mapping. Okay, let's now set a command for lock all video tracks. So let's open up the keyboard shortcuts panel again. First, make sure you're modifying your personal preset group with your name. Search lock all again, and type Q to the right of lock all video tracks. You'll get another warning saying it's already in use by some other command equally as confusing and underutilized. So hit OK. And if you test it out, you can see that it's locked all of the video tracks. Hit it again and it unlocks them. So let's open the keyboard shortcuts panel one last time. Now, if you ever wanna delete any of the existing shortcuts, you can just click on it and hit this X. It's as easy as that. All right, I think I've given you enough to get up and running with keyboard shortcuts. 
As always, if you found any of this to be helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when the next one is posted, and I will catch you next time.